I've taken a liking to telling people my parents were hippies. Maybe it's the fact that since the age of three they let us pick out our own clothing. And when my sister and I weren't clad in multicolored spandex, clashing patterns, and woolen sweaters, we were completely naked, running through a backyard garden of gooseberry bushes, golden raspberries, and scattered lines of Easter egg beads. My parents, they were hippies. Maybe it was the way my dad played guitar with a finger slide made from the broken neck of a glass beer bottle, the way he'd swing his hips and say the word groovy, and I'd laugh until our late night dinners where my mother placed before me a plate of organic mash, lentil curry, and homemade focaccia. She'd say, a kid's gotta eat. Only chubby kids are cute, the ones with thighs you can squeeze, so I thank her every day for my ghetto booty. And I thank my dad for taste in music and in food. We are a family who proves the theory of environmentalist determinism. If we are formed by the land that we burden, we are products of the parents that birth us. Hippies breed hippies. So my sister and I, we grew. Thoughts scattered like wildflower seeds, grounded with Easter egg beads, still clad in spandex and woolen sweaters, still clashing in patterns. But if you were to ask me to trace back to my roots, I could do so. With a line only muddled by family anecdotes and traditions, ask me where I'm coming from. How can I trace with such precision the ambiguous heritage of this colonial face? Let me take you to rural Quebec, where habitants see putting chômeur, my grand-père, puts maple syrup on everything. Perfected his English through crossword puzzles. My culture is as green as the tea that stained my grandmother's smile. I tell you, I don't eat animal byproducts, for I am the byproduct of an environmental geographer and an innovative chef. I'm rooted in the culture, running naked in a backyard garden. Dirt fills my pores and freckles blanket my body, but I'm told green is more of a matter of black and white. I'm not so self-righteous to claim to be a victim of the adversity of social ecology, but green itches from beneath my skin and blood fueled by B12 vitamins and the murky oxygen of Lake Ontario. Don't tell me green is another word for naive. Are my practices so fickle as the existence of the Greenland North or as strong as their beliefs? Frozen in stained glass windows and Arctic ice, when will society melt me? How much oil is in my cup of organic fair trade soy tea and what are they going to do with my body when I'm dead? You caught me grounded. As reality continues to spear me like a walrus at the hands of Vikings, I wonder what John Lennon would think when he made organic nonconformity mainstream. Was it uprooted by hypocrisy? Blistered and calloused, I often walk with bare feet, but that does not mean I don't leave a footprint. The generation before me left big shoes to fill, and even once I've had my fill, the earth continues to produce enough food to feed the world three times over, but I continue to consume enough energy to require three earths, so feed me. I was raised hungry and wondering why the Inuit culture of sustainability cannot be sustained. And I continue to drink water like it's something I'm entitled to. I find it difficult to swallow the idea of green being a luxury I was born into. My parents, they're teachers. And they raise me to question before I prove. So if we are formed by the parents we burden, we are products of the land that birds us regardless. To a mindset that questions, a responsibility that proves, to an awareness of identity, we must begin to raise ourselves. Thank you.